I can't believe I'm making a proper sit down podcast slash video about this shit. In the words of FD Signifier, this is the most complex, dumb thing to happen in a while because it's really fucking stupid. The whole thing is really fucking stupid. At the same time, it allows us to engage with numerous really important and complex issues. So complex, in fact, that I had to write notes so I'm not babbling. By the way, please check out his video on his take on the situation. I'm not sure how to link stuff for podcasts yet. I'm still learning. But the YouTube channel name is Signified B-Sides. And Signified is spelled S-I-G-N-I-F-I-E-D. Capital letter B. Sides. S-I-D-E-S. And the title of that video is Protect Black Women. But maybe not like that. Now, if you're watching or listening to this on YouTube, obviously the link will be in the description box below. Now, Signifier offers perspective from a cisgender heterosexual black man. Cisgender, for those of you who don't know, means the gender one was assigned at birth. So I am a cisgender woman, racialized as black because race is a construct, a way for the powers that be to dole out the goodies to specific people but that's another video all on its own anyway back to fd signifier he offers perspectives i wouldn't have thought about in the aftermath of this incident so please please check out his video because i will be referencing some of his points as well as adding my own two cents speaking of two cents now i have already offered that on tiktok literally 10 minutes after it happened on a commercial break because i watched this happen in real time and only realized things had gotten real when the audio was muted and lupita looked shook so clearly i hadn't had enough time to process what had just happened before posting my thoughts on tiktok which i'm starting to realize is almost as toxic as twitter and i'm not on twitter i'm not saying tiktok is toxic because people disagreed with my pov on the situation it's toxic because of the way in which people disagree it's not respectful it's childish and borderline aggressive now i wanted to take the post down but i'm not going to because why should i hide my mistakes and it's not like i said anything controversial no one gets it right all the time and I can always change my mind. I still stand by some of what I said. Chris Rock is an edgy comedian, and every time he gets on that Oscar stage, you can rest assured he's gonna make some jokes that will make some people uncomfortable. Why? Because there's some truth wrapped up in that joke. That's why whenever someone says something and then turns around and says, I'm just playing, or JK, just kidding, uh, you're not just kidding they meant that shit anyway chris makes a joke jada didn't appreciate it and that's okay the people who are saying she should be able to take a joke no just no she didn't like it you can't make her like it that's just how she feels she used to have a lot of hair and now it's falling out in clumps she feels a way about it let's not invalidate her feelings i saw a comment under one of the videos i watched about this and this person was saying that and i'm going to paraphrase because i made a mistake of not taking a screenshot because i didn't think i'd be making a video slash podcast about this but the person said alopecia is akin to balding in men but we don't see bald men walking around feeling sorry for themselves and not being able to take a joke about your baldness and that it's not like Jada has gone bald as a result of chemotherapy. My response to that is, how would this person know that some bald men aren't self-conscious about losing their hair? And two, so because Jada doesn't have cancer, it was okay for her lack of hair to be made fun of? The other layer to this is G.I. Jane, though I haven't seen the movie, strikes me as a strong female character so I'm guessing it was supposed to be a compliment to Jada because even before Chris uttered the joke, he said, Jada, I love ya. Jada, I love ya. Thereby letting her know beforehand that the joke wasn't coming from a mean-spirited place 
unlike the last time in 2016 when he said this. And even then, many will argue it wasn't mean-spirited. He was telling it like it is, but in a joke. There's also been this discourse lately about calling black women strong and how it isn't a compliment anymore because the more someone, i.e. black woman, is thought of as quote strong, the more her pain is invalidated because she is quote strong, she should be able to handle it or she'll be fine. And I don't know about you, but as a black woman, I don't want to be strong all the damn time. That shit is exhausting. As for Will, on the other hand, this is where FD Signifier's perspective shifted mine. I was on Will's side initially, and I can appreciate him standing up for his wife. Just not in that way. Jada wasn't in physical danger, and so Will's response and reaction, especially after having been caught on camera laughing, put a pin in that, was uncalled for. Will is a comedian himself. He could have turned that joke around on Chris if he really didn't like it. Or, since there is nothing worse to a comedian than an audience not laughing at their joke, Will should have just not laughed at all, perhaps shook his head in disapproval from his seat and approached Chris later and tell him he didn't appreciate the joke. Or, when Will got up to accept his Oscar and made his speech, he could have addressed the joke then. Instead of slapping someone half his size, emasculating that poor man in front of millions, thereby revealing to us that the slap wasn't just about Jada. It was for Black Twitter, and an attempt to reclaim his masculinity after the last couple of years of entanglement jokes. It was an attempt to do for Jada what he hadn't done for his mother. These are not facts, by the way, as I'm not in Will's head. These are just possible things. That being said, while this incident was the first of its kind at the Oscars, it certainly was not the craziest thing to happen at the Oscars or any other award show. Another incident that comes to mind while watching a few other creators take on the Will and Chris situation was Halle Berry and Adrian Brody. You see where I'm going with this? People are upset about the slap, and rightfully so, but people clapped when Adrian assaulted this lady on stage. Yes, it was assault because he didn't get her consent to kiss her, but she had to play along and make nice in front of millions. This clearly won't fly today in the era of the Me Too movement. Or how about the time when Kanye West got up on stage and humiliated Taylor Swift as she got her award and then proceeded to bully her for the next decade? Say what you will about Taylor Swift, but she didn't deserve that and neither did Halle Berry. There were no repercussions to my knowledge, and please correct me if I am wrong, but there were no repercussions for Brody and West. But I guess you can say Karma handled it. We don't see too much of Brody any longer, and West, well, y'all already know. Don't want to get into details because this video slash podcast isn't really about them. I was just trying to draw a parallel between the scenarios and how there seems to be selective outrage. Also, one thing that is abundantly clear to me now is that there needs to be ground rules and extra security at these events. Now onto the laugh before the slap. I may get dragged for this and that's okay because that's just how I'm processing this and it's just my opinion. Many may attribute that blowout partly to unresolved childhood trauma as I alluded to earlier. 
and they wouldn't be wrong in their assumption. I would go a step further and attribute it to astrology as well. I believe that astrology and zodiac and all that jazz should be taken with a grain of salt, but I do think there is some truth to personality traits associated with particular zodiac signs. Corinne Allude, another content creator on this here platform, meaning YouTube, had briefly referenced this in her video about the situation. Will is an air sign. A Libra more specifically and so am I. Now if you've been following me for a while on YouTube you know that in the past five years or so I've made a big to do about my birthday in October and taking weeks off of work at a time to celebrate. 2020 and 2021 was different for <laughs> obvious reasons. Anyway, some traits associated with Librans or people with Libra in their chart like Sun, Moon, and Rising are they are romantic, charming, got a great sense of style and aesthetics because they are ruled by Venus. They get along with most people but they are also very indecisive and like to keep the peace. Some may call that people pleasing. FD Signifier poses this question at the beginning of his second video about this situation. Why did Will Smith, a man known for his affable and rigidly curated public image, who's never lost his cool, slap comedian Chris Rock, a much smaller, neuroatypical man in the middle of the Oscars in front of a live audience of hundreds and a television audience of millions. All of this on what should have been the biggest night of his career. Now, I'm willing to die on the hill that it's been years and years of pent-up anger and always trying to be pleasant and be the nice guy until something snapped. That's why I say I'd rather be kind than be nice. Nice is an act, whereas being kind is the core of who one is. As a Libra myself, I can relate to wanting to keep the peace most of the time. The very fact that I'm making this video slash podcast about this old news and wanting to see all sides of this situation is a very Libran trait. We are the skills. We like justice and balance. We want to see and hear multiple perspectives, which makes us excellent candidates for leadership positions, including, but not limited to, business and law. Kim Kardashian is the perfect example. She's a great businesswoman, say what you will about her, but she's a great businesswoman and now she is studying to be a lawyer and she's a Libra, of course. As a Libra, I admit to people pleasing when I was younger. Now I think that we are all prone to people pleasing, Libra or not, but there's levels to this. At this point in my life though, I'd rather be respected than liked for being nice. Over the last few years, I've learned to say no without giving explanations and without any guilt in order to keep my own peace. And though friendships are very important to me, I have no problem letting go of a friendship no matter how long I've known this person, if I feel I've been disrespected in some way, shape or form, and I won't bat an eyelash about it. That's the detachment side of an air sign. We are simply unbothered by some things that bother other people. The point I'm trying to make here, and thank you if you're still here with me, there's only so much a person can take before people pleasing turns into resentment and rage. And that is exactly what we witnessed on March 27th on that Oscar stage. And though people are speculating that Will's career may be over after this, I don't think it will hurt him much. The man has been in over 20 movies in the last close to 30 years. He's in a blockbuster or two every summer and is one of the most bankable actors in Hollywood. He's got a net worth of about $350 million. The man is set even if he was to never ever be in another movie again, assuming he's invested properly. And yes, there's that old adage that money isn't everything. But it is when you're broke. Money will sure as hell solve a lot of my problems right now. I will quit my job today if I want a million dollars or inherited it. I am not even kidding. I pride myself on having a solid work ethic, but I don't like working hard. I'd rather work smart and in things I'm passionate about. So that argument isn't valid. It's the people with money who typically tend to say things like that. In conclusion, Bad move on Will's part. It's hard to say if he'll bounce back from this. Chris Rock handled it well, but I have a feeling he'll be more cautious about his jokes now. 
random fun fact. ASAP Rocky and I are birthday twins, October 3rd. And here's a scary realization I made. The president of Russia, I don't want to call his name, but he is a Libra. No further comments. Hope you enjoyed this discourse. Like, share, and comment, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!